I normally test the latest beauty releases, but today I'm testing out the most hyped products from the early 2000s. Let's start with some face products. You know I had to include the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. I feel like this was a lot of people's first foundation, mine included. The formula is like this chunky mousse with a bunch of little beads that mattify the foundation. I had to apply it with my fingers at first, of course. This foundation is just really odd to me. It doesn't look like skin. It doesn't look even. It's kind of drying and I can literally see the color changing before my eyes. I looked in the mirror and I was straight up orange, which I guess is fitting for this era. Loose powder mineral makeup was such a big thing in the 2000s. I've never tried this Bare Minerals powder foundation before, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. I don't think it's as buildable as it claims to be. I feel like wearing it sheer looks better than when you keep layering it, but I liked how this looked on my skin. It wasn't too drying, but I did need a setting spray to kind of melt it all in. It feels weightless, which I really liked, and everything I put on top of this looked nice. This also has SPF in it, and it's talc-free. This one triggered me because I remember trying to hide my acne with this stuff. This is the Maybelline Cover Stick Corrector Concealer. It's a very thick formula. It doesn't spread super easily and I can like feel it on my skin. It actually did a decent job of covering everything I needed it to cover, but concealer formulas have just gotten so much better than this. Plus the shade range is abysmal. This one can stay in the past. Bronzer usage was at an all-time high in the 2000s, and this one was always a popular choice. This is the NARS Laguna Bronzer. It's a bronzer with a bunch of gold shimmer in it. Surprisingly, this looked pretty smooth on the face, even on top of that Maybelline mousse foundation. I thought that and the shimmer in it would emphasize all of my texture, but it didn't. It also didn't look orange, which I was also nervous about. I also tried the classic Benefit Cosmetics Hula Bronzer. This one also applies very smoothly. It has no shimmer in it, which I prefer. I believe back then Benefit only had this one shade, which was a little light for me. The shade range still hasn't expanded very much, but this formula has held up. This is the iconic NARS blush in the shade Orgasm. It's a peachy pink with a ridiculous amount of gold shimmer in it. It claims to be buildable, but the more I layered this for that very 2000s pink blush look, the more textured my skin looked. Like this highlighted everything. It's weird because I applied a lot of the bronzer too, which also has shimmer in it, and it didn't look like this. This blush is just not for me. The Urban Decay Primer Potion is a tried and true favorite. The formula is thinner than other eyeshadow bases I've tried. I used a super cheap CoverGirl eyeshadow on top of this and I feel like it actually made it look way better. It makes it easy to blend out shadow. I feel like it intensifies the color. This is way overpriced, but I think this is a solid eyeshadow primer. I saw so many of these CoverGirl eye enhancers in my research for this video. They are just as chalky as they look. The colors I chose may be the reason why, but I can't talk about 2000s makeup without some frosty blue and white eyeshadow. I think if I hadn't used them on top of that Urban Decay Primer Potion, they just would have not shown up. Look at these swatches on the back of my hand. Just awful. I will say that these little sponge applicators that I used to always throw away actually apply the eyeshadow pretty well. Now these I still use all the time. These are the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils. You can use them for so much as an eyeshadow, as a base for eyeshadow, as an eyeliner. These got like a new life because of TikTok. People were using them to highlight certain areas of the face. The formula is just super creamy and easy to work with. It is kind of a pain to sharpen when you need to, but I like the formula, so I just deal with it. I also still use and really like this product. This is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Eyeliner. This does dry down quickly, so you wanna work fast, but I think it adds the prettiest sparkle to the eyes. It's an easy way to use glitter without any mess. I will say this doesn't layer very well though. It can get flaky if you layer it too much. This is the MAC Smolder Eyeliner. I had to try this specific eyeliner because Avril Lavigne said she used to use this one all of the time. I don't typically like wooden eyeliners, but this one applied really well. I have very sensitive eyes, so my waterline gets super watery when I try to apply eyeliner, but the pigment actually stuck with this one. I actually used to love the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. I think the formula is pretty good. It doesn't give a ton of length, but it gives a nice amount of volume without getting clumpy. I honestly think if it had a different brush, I'd like it more. In a sea of drugstore mascaras, I don't think I'd go back to this one, but I appreciate it for what it is. 
Doo-Wop Lip Venom is like the OG lip plumper. The tingle with this is pretty strong, so if you hate that feeling, I would avoid this. It has this really nice cinnamony scent and it gives a really nice shine. I like that it's a clear shade that you can put on top of anything. I noticed the plumping more on my top lip, but it definitely plumps, and I noticed that it also made my lips look a bit smoother. MAC lipsticks were so popular in the 2000s. Myth was like the concealer lip shade. It's this super pale nude that looks ridiculous on me without a lip liner. And Snob is this pale pastel pink color that reminds me of Nicki Minaj. Also looks awful on me. Aside from the questionable color choices, the MAC Satin Lipstick formula still holds up. It's comfortable on the lips and the formula is pretty buildable. Also, the vanilla scent of MAC lipsticks always takes me back. This is the MAC Lip Liner in Spice. I loved this. This lip liner formula applies really smoothly. It doesn't dry down too quickly, so you have time to blend. I tried to do a super defined lip liner look with that Myth lipstick, and I actually loved it. I'm definitely gonna keep using this. I've waited my whole life to try the MAC Lip Gloss. This is very thick, I will say. I personally love the feeling of a thick gloss. I love how cushiony it is, but you definitely feel this on the lips. I know why they call it lip gloss, because the shine this gives is unreal. I'm in love with this. I also tried a Lancome Juicy Tube, which is like the arch nemesis to the MAC lip gloss. I picked this color because it looks just like the one that Gretchen Wieners uses. It has a scent I really dislike. It's kind of floral, perfumey. The actual formula is nice. It's thinner than the lip gloss, but still really shiny and pretty. I don't think this is anything that special. The NARS lip gloss in Turkish Delight feels very 2000s. It's this pale, milky pink color. I think this used to be Kim Kardashian's favorite gloss, which... I don't know why. This formula is kind of oily and thin. I don't know if it used to be a different formula, but it's not very good now. This color also settles into the wrinkles on my lips, so it's just not super flattering. I could not do a 2000s makeup video without mentioning Lip Smackers lip glosses. They're more like a lip gloss for kids. Like my mom bought me these before I was allowed to wear any makeup. They're not actually a good lip gloss formula. They feel like chicken grease on the lips, but you know what? They still smell and taste just as good as you remember. I would never buy these as a serious lip gloss option, but using them again has brought me so much joy.